Hello and welcome to Singular Stars. Today we're looking at Maracaibo and in this video I'll be showing you how to set up the solo basic game. Once you've got the basic game under your belt it's then fairly straightforward to set up the campaign. So to start off um, we have the combat tokens. Um, I took all the combat chits, I shuffled them up and then there's actually space for two piles there just simply to um, save you having a stack that's too high because if you knock them they're going to go flying um, there's no difference between the two stacks it's just to um, save space um, so you shuffle those and put those down there then you have the crest tiles here uh, and the crest tiles again you shuffle them and um, split them in two however there isn't a space for the second set these aren't crest tiles these are story tiles um, for the crest tiles um, I've got half them here Whoops. And the other half um, I've stored off the top of the board for now. If I do run out of these, and I don't think I will, um, I'll just pull the other ones over. But as it is, um, I've just got a roughly half there. Um, I should point out, these are the, these combat tokens are face down. If I cut them here, you see there's some iconography on the other side. Um, these are supposed to be um, placed face down on here. Uh, the crest tiles, however, are face up. So it gives you a little bit of um, forward notice on um, what potentially um, you're going to be asked for um, in a in a future future round. Um, behind these tokens are the story tokens. Um, in the solo basic game, they won't be used, um, but that is where you're supposed to keep them. Um, I suppose you could keep the quest tokens there, but to be honest. That's just another stack that uh, I'm potentially going to knock flying, and uh, and it's probably better not to to have another one up there. So um, I've I've stored those off the top of the board, as I said. Okay, um, as it's a um, in the manual they call it a two player game, uh, but on the on the chit here it says one to two players. Um, there is a token for Maracaibo. This is a city token. And it, it sits here. In a one to two player game, you, you play this here. On a three to four player game, uh, you take it away. Um, all it's doing is restricting the number of times you can deliver goods to Maracaibo in a in a round. Obviously in a two player game, having the ability to send, to deliver two goods rather, uh, rather than one would mean that everyone would just deliver there if they wanted to. So this just adds some competition to the to the space. Then we have a number of other city tokens uh, and what we need to do is we need to take out these two tokens these are for three to four and four players uh, and that leaves us with these uh, these two have this icon in the top corner um, these are both for at least one player um, we take these and we need to take two of these these are all marked as one to four player so we need to stack them up and shuffle them and um, draw two out so I will just do that now, if I can not drop them everywhere. So let's just shuffle them around. And take two of those. So then these and these aren't going to be needed. So you can stick those back in the box. Very good. Right, then we take these four. And you want to shift them up. And then you want to place them on the board in these spaces. So Port Royal, Santo Domingo, Puerto Plata, and Cartagena. Uh, right, and then huh, turn them over. Don't need to be face down. So these set up your um, your four your four main cities um, of the Maracaibo. Okay, next we need to look at the project card. So um, we have, and it might not be too easy to tell. Uh, the A cards, which are denoted by having a dark border around them. 
um, a dark kind of rope border around them. And the B cards, which have a light rope border around them. Um, hopefully you can just about tell the difference. Um, and so in a um, in a solo game, what we need to do is deal each player eight from um, uh, eight from this deck. So just the solo player, so just um, just the actual human player will get eight from this deck, and then forty from this deck needs to be mixed in with the remainder of this deck. So to say that again. I'm going to deal eight of these to myself. I'm going to draw 40 from here. And I'm going to miss, mix the remainder of, of this deck with the 40 from this deck. And that will then give us our project deck for this game. The remainder of the cards, after I've taken 40 out of here, go back in the box. Um, we won't be using them. Um, so I will do that now off camera because you don't need to see me dropping all these sleeve cards everywhere. And then once I've done that, um, I'll cut back and we can continue. Okay, I've drawn my eight cards from the A deck. These are the cards up here. So these now make up my hand. Um, I've then taken the remainder of the cards from the A deck along with 40 of the B deck cards. I've shuffled them together and that's what this stack over here is. Uh, I've then drawn four cards from that stack and this is our project cards market. Okay, next off screen I have some piles of doubloons. Uh, just the cardboard ones for me, unfortunately. I don't have the fancy metal ones. Um, I also have a supply of um, the Synergy card, uh, tokens. Okay, the next step is to take your um, prestige building cards, which have this back on them. And you need to shuffle those up. And then you need to draw the top four and right, stack them, well, place them in a row across the top of your board. Um, you can't actually see the top of my board, uh, but they're going effectively here, 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 and here. Uh, the other cards then you can discard. Uh, back into the box. You're not going to need those for the rest of this game. Um, you then turn over the first one. Um, and you can see that this is a palace. You can't quite see that this is a palace. Um, uh, the other ones you'll turn at the start of each, um, of each round. So I'm going to move these off from here. Uh, and I'll refer back to them later on when we're playing but for your games i'm sure you'll have room to um to place them across the top of your board okay next we need to place the ownership markers onto um onto these spaces we have france spain and england blue red and white and um on each of these spaces there's room for two tokens two cubes and Except for the final one, where there's only room for, sorry, the first one, there's only room for one cube. Uh, they're the ownership tokens, and they are how you, um, you show which country owns the respective village or city around the Caribbean, um, which is slightly troubling, but um, yeah, ownership. Okay, so that's the that's the board set up from a general perspective. Then, from a player perspective, each player, obviously there's only one because this is solo, needs to take one of these lovely little uh, ship boards. Um, you need to then place two discs on each of these round, kind of goldish um, circular markers. They signify... Um, they signify where these brown uh, discs are meant to go. And so each one of these slots has a stack of two. And there are 12 slots. So you've got to place 24 of these tokens down. Um, try not to knock the board or 
um, you'll end up scattering them around everywhere and not have a good time. Um, it's a little bit fiddly. Okay, next we want to take the wooden components and place those around the board. So you want to take your victory point marker, which is kind of a shield shaped one, and place that on the zero spot um, for both yourself and the solo player. So I'm player, I'm playing as yellow, and uh, the solo player is going to play as black. Uh, you want to take your uh, ship and place them on Havana, one for the solo player and one for yourself. You want to take the explorers, put those onto the explorers start space. Again, one for myself and one for the AI player. And then you want... What's next? Oh, the influence markers. Uh, so these markers here, you want to take these and stack them up there. One across each country's influence track. Uh, again, one for yourself and one for the AI player. Next, you want to place a cube on the one slot of your combat track on your ship board. Um, I should also point out the solo player doesn't have a ship board. Uh, they have another type of board, and I'll come to that in a second. Um, so you don't need to do that for the solo player. Then you need to mark a cube on the eight coin um, spot on the coin track, coin income track. And on the VP income track, you put it on the zero spot there. Um, the um, AI does not gain coins or VPs, so you don't need to stick a cube out for the AI. Next, each player needs two figures of their own colour. We'll put that here for now. Then the rest of these figures go off into the bank. I should put them off over here. For the AI player, place all of their figures into a supply. The AI may use their figures at any time. Um, each player needs a career card. Um, so the solo player doesn't get these. These are just for the human player. So I will shuffle these up. And we will deal two out. And we're going to look at these two and pick one. But we'll pick one in a, in a minute. Once you've selected a career card, you need to place it above the shipboard. Then take three figures from the supply and place them onto the appropriate spot. Next is when you set up for if it's a campaign or not. In this case, we're not playing a campaign, so we've put card 75 out. Let's put the instructions. And card 75 um, has some extra instructions on there telling you that you need to place a quest tile on spot 15, which is here. So 15. Uh, that's actually what this bit is. Um, because we're only playing one one player, that's only the top quest tile goes down. The other two are for three to four and four players. And then, um, on subsequent rounds, at the end of the round, we'll be sending other quest tiles out. But we don't need to worry about those for now. So next, um, I need to decide which out of these project cards um, I want to keep. I'm going to choose four to keep in my hand. Um, one to go in the planning space, which is the space at the top here. And then three are going to go in the discard pile. So I will make that decision once I've set up the solo player. To set up the solo automa board, you need to take one of the ship boards that has the automa board on the back of it. Hopefully not the one you've just set up for yourself. And the automa board looks like this. And you need to place um, some of the brown wooden discs that you are using to stack on the um, on the normal ship board. Need to line them up on here and you line them up above each shield you don't need to stack them um, you don't pay any attention to the the orange spots or the yellow spots rather um, i know on the shipboard that's where you normally stack your twos two two tokens but in the automa board uh, they're actually used for figuring out the end game scoring um, instead you just need to put one of these discs over each wooden shield which is quite tedious. There's 22 of them. So if you split your wooden tokens up into sets of 24 and stored them with each player, which is probably a sensible thing to do to speed up um, setup at the start, you will have two left over. That can be kind of confusing. 
Um, so just to let you know. You then need to sort the um, Automa cards, which we have here, into um, A, Bs and Cs. So if you see here on the card, in this bottom corner here, it's got a letter on it. And you need to sort them into A's, B's and C's. And then depending on the difficulty that you're playing, that, that dictates how many of each letter you will have in your deck. So you should have... Let's count them out. One, two. These are shuffled, which is unfortunate. There are five A cards. There are um, six B cards and four C cards. Uh, and depending on the difficulty level, you pick a certain number from each in the rule book uh, that I'm reading from that tells you how many you need of each. Um, I suggest you refer to that. If you want to play a medium game, which I guess I might try today, uh, that's five A cards, one B card and one C card. So I shall shuffle the B cards. That's the B card. I'll shuffle the C cards. And then you don't need the AO cards anymore, so you can stick those back in the box. And then you need to take your A's, B's and C's and give them a good shuffle. And then, once you've done that, your setup on for the solo board is done. So finally, the only thing we had left to do was to figure out which of our career cards we wanted to keep and what we wanted to do with uh, cards that we have in our hand. Remember, we had to keep four in our hand, put one in our planning space, and discard three. Um, and then we need to choose one of these two, two campaign cards. For a two-player game, including against the AI, ownership markers need to be placed on the following locations. A red marker on San Juan, space six. A white marker on St. Kitts, space seven. And a blue marker on space eight, Martinique. Also, remember to put three quest tiles uh, along the explorer track across the bottom of the board. Against the AI, you are always the first player, so you draw eight doubloons. Once you've done that, um, you are then ready to begin. I hope you found this video useful. If so, please like and subscribe. In my next video, I will play through uh, the first round against the AI, and I'll explain some of the rules as I go. Thank you very much for watching.